Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Rahul from Peach Payments. Um, just to give you guys some background, you know, Peach Payments, we're a payment service provider. If uh, we work with businesses like Zando, OrderIn, SafariNow.com, and many others, enabling them to sell a product or service to their customers through a digital channel. Um, very likely, if you shop online in South Africa, you've paid with Peach Payments. Um, without potentially um, you know realizing it um, <clears throat> so today what we're going to talk about is you know one what is conversion and why this is one of the most important metrics that you know you as a business um, care about um, as an e-commerce business um, care about and then what what can we do in a simple form um, to optimize this from a checkout perspective you know conversion um, so let's let's talk about what is conversion right so um, conversion rate basically it's it's any percentage of visitors that land on your website who complete a desired action now the desired action could be them filling out a form them contacting you them buying a product subscribing to your newsletter whatever you deem as the end goal of um, that uh, journey. So from an e-commerce perspective, when we think about conversion, we think about, was there a sale? Was there a successful purchase, right? Um, and, and that entire journey of the user, from the time they go to Google and search for, you know, all weather boots to the time they actually come to your website and make a purchase, you know, that entire journey, there's a lot of different things you can optimize along the way. Obviously, we can't talk to everything today, but we'll try to pick, you know, two or three of these uh, most important um, items that at least um, we have some experience on from a Peach Payments perspective and what we can also, um, you know, share about. Um, so obviously the next question is, okay, you know, what is a good conversion, right? Like, what are we really talking about, right? So Adobe did like the, a research on, um, they did it for the consumer electronics uh, report. This was actually this year already. Um, and across different industry segments, as you can see, the conversion rate varies quite a bit. But an overall average of 3% is what, you know, they found across different industry segments to be a good conversion rate. Now, that means that of every 100 users that you manage to land on your website, only three convert in a purchase. Um, it's it's half for if you're a consumer electronics retailer, you know, then it's about one and a half percent. If you're into gifting, it could be higher up to 4.95%. Um, so what, what I've also, you know, understood is it's the at 2%, you're already at a good conversion rate um, for your merchants but that that sounds so low right it's like wow of every hundred users that come to my website only three or two are actually going to make a purchase so this kind of puts in perspective of really how many users you lose while they navigate through your website and you know all the different touch points you have with them so then we started to think about, okay, you know, what is that user journey in your online store, a typical user journey? So let's start with, you know, when the user visits your site. Now, this user could be coming to you, to your website through, you know, organic search. So they went into Google and type for uh, Peach Payments and then found our website URL and clicked on it. It could be paid search, which is, you know, you buying Google ads, um, social media ads, Instagram, Facebook, and then redirecting the user over to your website. Once the user's on your website, they typically, then the next thing they do is they want to search and find the product that they really want to purchase. They're there for a purpose, right? So you end up on, um, you know, xyzshoes.com, and then you want to buy a pair of all-weather boots. So you would potentially look for the search bar, type, all weather boots and hope that you know it shows you the right product. Now this is the biggest challenge, right? And this is I think one of the most underrated features that doesn't get talked about enough is search. You know, and we'll we'll try to tackle search very briefly. Obviously, we're not an expert on the search front, but I felt that that's one topic we can you know at least superficially touch today. 
once the user found this product, they start to, you know, they add it to the cart. At that point, you could cross sell and upsell. So, you know, if you have shopped on Amazon or one of these websites, they'll say, hey, people who buy this product also buy these different products. So you're trying to increase your basket size and the average order value as the users going through the purchase. Once they've, they've you know, clicked on the buy now, pay now button, at that point, the make or break comes down to, are they actually able to pay for the purchase? Because if they fail at this step, you know, it makes or breaks your conversion rate. Because remember how we defined conversion was a successful purchase on your website. So at the end of that journey, you hope to go back with a sale, you know, ka-ching, nothing else matters. And, you know, that's the end goal that we're driving towards as owners, you know, operators, participants in the e-commerce or digital commerce ecosystem. So let's, let's talk about search a little bit, right? Obviously, um, the faster the customer can buy, you know, find the product on your website, the more likely they are to purchase. Remember, when they come to your website, there is clear intent, there is clear desire to for that consumer to buy that particular product. Now, if if they if they don't find what they look for, you know, they they start getting distracted. So think of yeah, a good analogy for this would be think of yourself in a supermarket. You know, you go in buying, wanting to buy a box of strawberries, but if you can't find it easily, you see uh, 20 other things, you start to question yourself, hey, do I even need to buy that box of strawberries? And you kind of leave Checkers or Spa or Woolies, you know, wherever you prefer to shop. So there's a lot of things that can change in that consumer's intent to purchase if they aren't able to find the right product as quickly as possible. Um, you know, from on Shopify, um, they had a stat out there which said they are 1.8 times more likely to purchase a product if they actually search for a product, right? And, and obviously this means, does your website have on-site product search? And this is one of the most missed things that, um, you know, I go to a lot of websites, but there's no ability to search. I have to go to menu and categories and then go to a product. So what these, Online, you know, shopping cart platforms like a Shopify or Wix or WordPress or Big Commerce, what they do really well is they understand these user behaviors and they've already built a lot of these features. So if you haven't enabled product search or on-site search in your website, that's definitely one thing to look for. Um, if you just simply Google, hey, how do I optimize search? You'll find enough articles from many experts who will tell you how, you know, you can improve it. How does auto completion and suggestion make a difference in likelihood of purchase, etc.? So, so my intent is not to bring dive down and say, okay, this is how you can optimize your search, but to highlight that have you thought about product search and its importance in driving conversion for your e-commerce site? Where does this go in the future? You know, obviously we're looking at deep personalization. So, how can you personalize the search? How do you know? You know, what have they been searching elsewhere, and then identifying what the intent is or what the desire is over there. Voice search, you know, hey Google, hey Alexa, can you buy me a pair of all weather boots? You know, that is the future. My two and a half year old daughter already says, hey Google, can you play some nursery rhymes? So when, when does that user behavior move to purchase? It's a matter of time. And then contextual filtering, I think that's another aspect. If you're buying a laptop, let me search let me filter by RAM, by, you know, does it have an SSD or a hard disk and not generic filter attributes. Um, you know, for me, like those three were the main few forward looking things that stood out from a search perspective. Now, let's say you got search to work, then it coming back to a funnel, you know, it kind of shows us that really at the end of the day, what will make or break your conversion rate is your payments process potentially. Right, so assuming your website does the work, search is working well, you've managed to cross sell and upsell. If the guy can't pay you, it doesn't matter. So then we thought about, okay, you know, we're a payment service provider. What do we think are, or what have we seen are the three easiest things that you can, as a business can think about in terms of improving conversion. So the first one we said, you know, is obviously payment methods, which means offer your merchants as much choice as possible 
or your consumers as much choice as possible in how they want to pay you, right? And we'll dive deep into each one of these. Uh, mobile interfaces. It'll be, uh, I'm gonna show you some statistics that will surprise you in terms of how important mobile is, um, especially to Africa, right? And then other, other features like one-click checkout. So, you know, how do we reduce the friction in the checkout experience for um, your customers? And um, it kind of ties back to mobile interfaces again. So let's talk about payment method. You know, payment method is effectively, um, it's a way on how people can pay you um, for whatever purchase they're trying to make. So today in South Africa, if you think about how you pay for your online purchases, you know, there are payment methods like card, which is Visa, Master, Amex, Diners, um, instant EFT is quite popular. Um, you know, you have QR code scanning tools like Masterpass, um, and then you have you know other tools like MobiCred. We just heard from PayFlex, Google Pay, One Voucher, Discovery Miles, eBucks. So we said, okay, let's look at our platform and just to qualify it and put it in context. Under supported payment methods is what we support, and then on the right side of that uh, slide, what you see is what are we seeing as the most used payment methods across our platform, right? So of all the transactions that we see, 68% are still card, which means MasterCard and Visa domin and, and Amex as well, dominate um, these markets, you know, um, for a while. Um, yeah, I can see a question around Zapper and Snapcan. I think the way we support Zapper and Snapcan is you can scan a MasterPass QR code today using Zapper, SnapScan, or your bank's scan to pay app. I think there's a lot of work. This is an underrated payment method. I think there's a lot of work to be done in terms of consumer education. And I would expect to see this growing from the 0.7% that it sits at today um, to a lot higher, right? But if you really, really think about it, 98% of all transactions are, at least on our platform, are happening through Card, EFT, Secure, um, Ozo. And then there's a long tail of different payment methods. Um, as I said, we don't support all the payment methods yet. You know, we continuously add new payment methods to our platform. So this is in no means to say, oh, these are the only payment methods that work. So the, I, the concept here is throw as many options as possible at your, payment, at your customers. You know, why restrict to only card or only OZO or only EFT secure? You should be enabling everything possible so that your consumer has the choice and it's as easy as possible for them to pay you. Okay. Um, next we go to mobile interfaces. Now this, this for me, this is the most amazing statistic, right? Um, what you see, again, Shopify published a stat that on Black Friday, 64% of all sales on the Shopify platform came from a mobile device. And that's not too far away from what we are seeing. So if you see the little circle pie chart, on our platform, 74.3% of all transactions are coming from a mobile device, right? Desktop accounts for 24%, and then, you know, 1.7% is tablets. So then I started to dig through and say, okay, what kind of devices are people using? So, you know, if we, in Google Analytics is great this way, um, so we can dig through and say, okay, what screen sizes? As you can see, there's a whole range of different screen sizes. So this doesn't mean that, oh, my customers' customers, so my merchants' customers are only Apple iPhone users. Actually, Samsung, um, the G Galaxy Grand Prime was one of the most used phones on our platform. Then it went to Apple and a whole range of other you know, screen sizes. So what this means is you need to make sure that your website is responsive, that you, your payments process is responsive, that it supports mobile. And Africa in a lot of cases is mobile first. It's not even mobile only. It's, uh, sorry, not even mobile first, it's actually mobile only. A lot of consumers in Africa are actually only accessing the internet from their mobile phones. So something to think about as you start to you know, evaluate your options, whether which platform you use for your shopping or for payments. Um, the third thing we talked about is, hey, how do we reduce friction in the checkout process for your customers um, and make it as easy as possible? You know, how many of you have struggled entering those 16 digits of a card number on a mobile device? 
or if you're paying with the FT Secure, you know, pay, entering your banking username and password and all of those details. So this is where, you know, a Amazon created this whole one-click checkout process, which, thank God, the patent has expired in September 2017. Um, but effectively, the whole concept and idea behind that was, hey, how do we make it as easy as possible for that customer to press buy now? We have the card on file, we charge the card, sale is done, right? How do we prevent them from leaving the aisle? So, you know, when you, if you're, again, analogy, if you're back in a store and you're standing in a store and you, you know, it takes too long to uh, reach the teller, how many times have you left the product on the side and walked out of the store because you have something else to do? You know, that patience is even shorter for an online purchase. You know, people's attention span is even shorter when it comes to digital. So doing things like allowing card storage and one-click checkouts will also increase conversion. So we saw on our platform, depending on what product category you are and what target audience you, you know, we've seen in some in merchants a 10 to 25 percentage point increase in conversion for tokenized payments or card, stored card payments versus a once-off purchase. Right? That's huge that's straight to your top line and bottom line, right? Then at that point, any costs you pay to your payment gateway don't matter at the end of the day, right? Um, once of purchases also introduce in 3D secure and a two-factor authentication. Yes, that makes your business safer, but we've also seen that 3D, just the whole OTP process, directly contributes to between eight and 10, 12% to your failure rate. So what this means is, you know, if you have high repeat customer purchases, if they're buying product from you very frequently, you want to do a subscription model, or you have a lot of mobile users, in-app purchases, these are the use cases that will benefit a lot from enabling card storage and tokenization. So I'm going to leave you with some questions on, you know, what can you do today? Because obviously, this is a compressed version of saying, hey, what are the three things that I should care about? But how do you deal with it in your own business? You know, these are the questions. Like, who are your customers? Know your customer very well. Not everything maps to everyone, right? It's not real. Every solution doesn't meet every merchant's requirements. You know, do you offer them choice? Is, you know, do you have a lot of foreign customers, but your gateway doesn't allow foreign transactions? Um, how does your payment page work on mobile devices? Um, is there something that you can do to work with your payment provider to help improve your conversion? You know, is there some analysis that can be done? So these are some of the questions that you can think about um, as you, you know, think about improving conversion for your business. Because even a single percentage point increase in conversion straight improves your profitability of your business at the end of the day. Thank you.